Hi everyone, my name's Donna and I work for EdLab. I previously worked as a physics lecturer at the Maastricht Science Programme and now I still give some guest lectures there every year. Now, for the following period, we were asked to pre-record some of our lecture material for students, whereas we can offer the tutorials mostly face-to-face. -face. So I just got to the end of recording my lectures for the next semester, and I wanted to share some of what I've learned during the process, because I've got to be honest, it hasn't all been smooth sailing. So firstly, it takes way, way longer than you expect. I had three lectures to convert into asynchronous educational activities. So my lectures are usually two hours long, that's including a break. And I thought, well, if I split those into short videos, I'm not going to do two hours worth of videos, but I'll split them into various clips on different topics and I'll mix some other exercises into those as well that the students can do asynchronously. So I thought, well, you know, including prep time, three lectures, hmm, let's say a day per lecture, and then maybe like an extra day just in case, right? A bit of buffer time. So I thought for three lectures, it would take a total of four full working days, uh, including the preparation and including editing. I've got to be honest, it took probably closer to double this. And probably because I made two mistakes. The first, I took for granted that I, you know, when I normally lecture live, I do some preparation beforehand. I, you know, it's been a year since I've taught that material. I'll go through it. I'll make sure that I remember the order of everything. I'll make sure if there's complicated calculations that, I, you know, my brain's sharp and I, and I can still do them. Uh, so I always prepare in advance if I'm going to give the lecture live. And I took for granted that, well, if I'm going to record it, then I can just have another take and have another take. So I can kind of prepare as I go along. Why don't I just read through like the slides and then do one clip and then I'll read through the following slides and then I'll record my next clip. Um, but it really didn't work like that because uh, I ended up making so many mistakes uh, because I wasn't prepared that I should have just prepared it from the start like a normal lecture. So that was my experience in my first, uh, the, the first few clips that I tried to make. And from then on, I really did just prepare the, the, the lecture material or the video material as if I was going to give it live. And then it was much smoother. The other problem that I think I have is that sometimes I'm too much of a perfectionist. So at some point you have to let go. And when I first started recording, uh, I, I, I just said, uh, then I went, uh, uh, and if, if I made a mistake or stumbled, or I went, oh, I forgot to say that. Instead of correcting myself in the video, uh, I thought, okay, I have to re-record the whole thing, or I had to spend loads of time post-editing after. So these are the things that I realized I had to learn to let go of. Otherwise, the recordings were just going to take months. So you, you really have to uh, let go a little bit and realize, yeah, you know, it's never going to going to be 100% perfect. Um, I have the advantage that I do, uh, I, I did do some post editing because I do have some video editing software. Um, I know not everybody has access to, to good video editing software. Um, there are uh, tools available and I'll provide some links here that, that people have recommended and also that the university library can, can point you in the right direction as well. So my second learning point was that it's really difficult to, to choose how and what to record. Um, so media, the media site recorder is excellent for um, recording your screen and it gives you the option of recording your screen or a presentation on, you, on your computer or laptop while simultaneously recording your webcam or your audio. So you've got uh, really good options there. Um, this is really good if you want to give a PowerPoint presentation and I think it's really nice to have the option for the students that they can see your face at the same time. So I, I think that just makes it a little bit more engaging for the students. But I, I am teaching courses coming up in electronics. So I have to draw a lot of diagrams and I have to do a lot of calculations and equations. And sometimes I've got to be honest, I'm worried about the, the copyright of the images that I want to use. So I thought, well, it might be easier just to write things down. So I tried three different approaches. 
The first was using my phone and I would hold the phone in a tripod and I would point that over the table and I would try and write pen on paper. Now that's got two issues. One, um, you need to find a really clear pen. So you don't want something so thick that it's gonna take, you know, you write a little thing and it's taken up the whole page. That was one issue if you use a really thick pen. If you use a really thin pen, then you have issues with visibility. But what I found the biggest issue was um, the camera, it would focus on the paper until I moved my hand in the way to write something and then it would focus on my hand. So the paper would constantly come in and out of focus. So I found that quite irritating and it, it was kind of the, it felt like the easiest solution. So that was a bit frustrating. So the second thing that I tried is I have, um, this is really, really old, um, but it's, it's an old uh, sort of tablet with a, a stylus, a pen that you attach and you, you connect it to your computer and then you can kind of draw things on the screen. But even with this, it, you know, because using a mouse is kind of clunky, but even with this, I found that um, if I wrote on the screen and I tried to annotate a uh, PowerPoint presentation or images in paint or something like that. Uh, there were low, firstly, there were loads of technical issues and it's really slow and it's hard to get the feel of it. And essentially I felt like my writing looked like a five-year-old had done it. So I also, I tried it a little bit and then I decided actually to, to go to this solution. Um, so I've borrowed a, a flip chart from work, which has a whiteboard on, on the back and I borrowed a load of pens and that's how I've been doing my calculations and my drawings. For the sake of this video, I'm, I'm quite uh, far, far from the camera. So this looks a bit small, but usually if I'm recording something and I want the students to be able to see, then I move the camera a lot closer to the board. Um, people, people uh, in some of the previous webinars that we ran at EdLab, people asked, you know, they said, oh, I'm a good lecturer, I get good feedback from students, but how can I make my enthusiasm come across if I'm giving a lecture online? Um, I can't present how I usually would. And I actually found this to be the best solution for that because um, I prefer to stand up when I teach and I'm standing up to talk to the camera. It allows my mannerisms to be seen more clearly, which I think can be more engaging. Uh, and I just felt like I could be more energetic in this sort of situation. And to record this, you could, at the moment I'm using my mobile phone, but you could use your laptop as well. Uh, and of course you could just be in a tutorial or lecture room to, to use the whiteboards there. You don't have to, to, to borrow something and do it at home. If you want to be able to stand up more easily, then um, I say that having a tripod for your for your phone is really useful. Or of course, you could just go really low tech, and this is something that I often do to create a sort of standing desk at home. Uh, is I just use a, a pile of empty old shoe boxes so that I can lift my laptop up, so that you, you know how you can see it here, uh, and that means that everything can be on eye level, even if you're teaching standing up. A couple of other tips, um, I would say, don't just take a two hour lecture and turn it into a two hour video, even if you split the video into many, many different clips, um, because I just think it's, it's too difficult to engage people uh, for that length of time. So I would split it into smaller clips and then I would try and take certain parts of the content out. People often ask, how do I squeeze two hours worth of content into a vi you know, shorter, shorter video clips online? Well, to s try and work out what you can take out uh, and interweave those into different types of activities. So I always start by giving uh, my intended learning outcomes uh, before, before they watch the video and then um, perhaps give a checklist like, uh, after you've watched the video, you should know these things or be able to recall these things or explain these things so that they can go through and refresh themselves if they haven't. Um, for something that I was teaching that was very new and conceptual, I got them to fill in like a, a glossary of new terms because there were so many new terms that I introduced. You can also use quizzes, for instance, so that they can test themselves. Did they get it or not? Uh, sometimes I give a mathematical example, so I do the calculation, and then instead of going through many, many, many different examples on the board, then I will then just give them the question separately and say, now try and apply this method to different examples, uh, or this uh, apply this to a different context, for instance. So provide extra examples, then 
provide copies of the slides uh, like so if you're writing everything basically uh, copies of, of the PowerPoint slides to download the copy of the diagrams or it, copies of the questions so that they can fill things in as they go along or, or even try using discussion boards as well so just to try and make the asynchronous part of your education a little bit more engaging finally don't forget that the viewers can only see what you want them to see. So this means that I wanted to be careful about continuity errors. So I made sure that if I was recording uh, week three's lecture material, that I carried on wearing the same shirt for all of week three or you know the, just that lecture material because I just thought it looks better for continuity and then they can't tell how much painstaking time has gone in, how many days I've been recording the same thing over. Um, so that, that's one tip that I would give. Although I did think it would be uh, quite interesting to, to test like the um, change blindness and see whether people did actually notice whether I, I changed, changed watches or changed, the, uh, changed what I was wearing in between. Um, you can also use this to your advantage though, the fact that they can only see uh, what's on screen because you can be really comfy. So, uh, you know, you can see here uh, underneath, I'm wearing my favorite uh, comfy Garfield shorts and you know, my sexy slippers. So uh, you can use that to your advantage. Also, um, they can only see a section of your board. So in this case, I could underneath I usually put extra notes or whatever I'm struggling to remember. So that's really useful as well. Also, when I'm presenting, you can see if, uh, if I'm not specifically doing a screen capture, then I usually create two versions of my PowerPoint and I can add my notes to the screen. So I still continue to use my pointer to go through the slides so that as I scroll ahead, I can keep up to, to, to date with the information on there. And also, I tend to throw notes all over the screen if, uh, if my, if my uh, phone is here so that I'm recording this way, then I can read all of this information that's directly behind my camera. If you do want to use notes that you keep directly behind the camera, then um, sometimes it can be advantageous not to stand too close to the camera because if I stand close to the camera and my eyes shift over to where my notes are, that becomes very obvious. So then it's easier to stand back from the camera and that helps as well. So there are just these few little tips that you kind of pick up as you go along. But as with anything, it just uh, gets easier with practice, easier and quicker with practice. Recording my lectures was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. I quite enjoyed doing it and I've learned a lot. There are a lot of things that I feel like if I'd have known at the beginning would have saved me time. And that's why I've made this short video. So I hope this will be helpful for you as well. Thanks a lot.